welcome everybody in this video we will get introduced to hardware description language known as vhdl what is hdl hardware description language is a higher level language which helps the designer to describe the circuit's operation and then converts the description which is given by the user in a file which can be programmed on a programmable logic device and hence we can implement the design vhdl is a programming language that allows us to model and develop complex digital systems basic components of vhdl program are entity architecture configuration package and library also may be part of that the very basic two units which are essential for any vhdl program are entity and architecture entity specifies the interface and the input outputs of the system that we are designing whereas the architecture describes the design's behavior functionality and how the outputs are generated from the inputs obviously the architecture does not have an existence without any entity there has to be a binding between entity and architecture we may use some compiled design units in the design which are compiled in the form of library and hence we may be utilizing library and the packages inside the library in a particular program so as we said earlier this is a sample of entity the syntax says keyword entity then you have to define what is known as entity name is is a keyword in vhdl followed by that there should be a list of ports which are input and output ports in a given system the ports are to be given two attributes one is port direction and the other is the data type with which the port is supported and then we are going to end the entity with entity name about the directions of the ports and about data types we will discuss more when we will see the example architecture specifies the behavior the function the interconnections and the relationships between the inputs and outputs of an entity architectures can have various levels of abstractions and implementations and hence architectures can be written in multiple ways there may be a design ready which is specifying interconnections of smaller components and the architecture may be describing such interconnections this kind of architecture typically is called as structural architecture whereas in some designs we may be describing behavior of the system with respect to or with the help of inputs and outputs this kind of architecture is said to be behavioral architecture for a given entity one can define variety of ways of architectures or multiple architectures but for any configuration there will be one entity one architecture bound to each other for producing a uh, implementation or a design the syntax for architecture is as follows architecture is a keyword followed by that there will be a name given by the user to the architecture the architecture has to be binding to the entity so it says architecture architecture name of the entity name and is so this shows the binding of the architecture with the entity followed by that there will be number of declarations for example you may be defining some interconnecting signals 
or you may be defining some predefined components and all such declarations will come just after the uh, architecture name declaration this begin is actually for uh, the beginning of the architecture and inside the architecture you would be writing number of VHDL statements which are essentially concurrent statements and after you write all the statements in the architecture describing the design we would end the architecture by end architecture name. If we are using some library, the library has to be declared by a keyword library followed by the library name which we are using. There can be standard library like, like, like IEEE or one can create one's own library with a user's library name. If we are using a package within a particular library, then we have to declare it by a statement use, use, you have to specify the library name dot the package name dot the parts inside the package followed by a semicolon every VHDL statement ends with a semicolon the example of the library is as library IEEE is a standard IEEE library available for VHDL and we are using IEEE dot standard logic 1164.all package in which standard logic type of data is defined. The example, we want to write a code for a simple logic circuit known as half adder. A half adder essentially is an adder which is adding two bits and producing one bit sum and one bit carry. As a result, the entity named as half adder entity half header and the ports are named as a b which are the inputs of the type standard logic and sum and carry which are the outputs of the type standard logic now the very fact that i'll be using standard logic in this entity i will have to declare ieee library and use the standard logic package within that library the architecture for this code is as architecture half order architect this is a name given to the architecture ha underscore art of the entity name which i have given as half header so this is the architecture statement now since i don't want to declare any signals or any smaller components i do not have any declarations here i directly begin with the architecture then i define the characteristics of sum and carry as produced from a and b so i define sum is a xor with b carry is a and it with b and that is all is the description i want to give inside the half adder and that is how i end my architecture end ha arch so there are many things which we have seen separately or differently uh, specified here in this program one fact that uh, VHDL is not case sensitive and hence whether I write capital SUM or I write small SUM will be same. There are operators like XOR and AND which I have used and there are symbols like less than or equal to as it appears to be but this is an assignment operator in VHDL statements. So more about operators and uh, etc we will see in the next slides so we will talk about the data types which are supported we are talking about variety of data types in this slide and the examples given are as the data type bit is of nature which is having one or zero values i can have a bit vector which is formed of ones and zeros there is a data type known as standard logic which we have seen in case of IEEE package. Then there are data types like boolean, integer, real, time, character, string etc. We will see the use of such data types in the later uh, designs. Talking about the operators, 
Assignment operator for signals and input outputs is less than or equal to for variables, constants and initialization is colon equal to and for using vector assignment it is equal to greater than. And the examples given are when I am assigning a value single bit, I am writing the value single bit in quotes and assigning it to x. When it is multi bit, I am writing the array in double quotes and assigning it to w. So the right hand side value gets assigned to the left hand side signal or the output port, whatever it may be. Now when I am doing vector assignment, I am saying 0 vector and 1 or the 0th bit is 1 and all other bits are 0. This is the description for a multi-bit vector w which is equivalent to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 assigned to w. When I am initializing a value to a variable or assigning a value to a variable, I am directly using colon equal to as the operator. Logical operators not and or nand nor x or nor x nor etc are used as text as shown. The arithmetic operators are as shown. So if one has to do arithmetic operation then these operators are to be used. When there is a comparison or a relational operator then uh, Equal to is single equal to and all these operators which are for not equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to etc. will be utilized. Now these will be typically utilized when we are checking a condition or comparing uh, numbers. The shift operators are performing shift operations and they are again as text SLL or SRL for shift left or shift right logic. Concatenation operation can be achieved through a hypersan or AND operator. Uh, there is something known as attributes and for the data item or the data variable which is defined, uh, low, high, left, right, length, range, etc. are the attributes which can be applied to the data item and it specifically returns some particular values from the data. Same way attributes can be applied to signals as well and they return some values. Now when we will start writing programs and when we want a particular characteristics of data or signals, usage of these attributes will be very clear. With this much, we will stop the introduction of VHDL. What we did was just introduced what are the basic components of VHDL code and introduced the user to data types, operators and attributes of VHDL. Thank you.